You want some more seaweed? More seaweed. Mm. <laughs> mommy, mommy, <laughs> I got one. Yeah. Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. I will be making my signature <laughs> <laughs> my signature katong soup. So it's a red curry soup. I always make it with chicken, but today I kind of just wanted to do something different and use pork instead. I've been getting a lot of requests to do videos on my recipe, so I will um, kind of share that with you guys today. We're adding cork feet also. I never tried this before, but then we're going to try it because my husband requested it. So we're just going to see how it goes. If you want to learn how to make this kabong soup, then uh, just keep watching. Before I get started, this is everything that you will need to make the curry soup. Feel free to take a screenshot if you want. And I just want to mention that all ingredients can be purchased at any Asian market you have near you. Or you can also order them online if you want. First, I like to start off with the noodles. Fill a pot of water halfway and bring it to a boil. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, I'm going to open up the vermicelli noodle packet. The noodles I have here are tied together in bulks, so I'm removing the white string and putting them in a bowl. Then I'm going to wash the noodles and soak them in hot water. Soaking the noodles will soften it and make it quicker to cook in the boiling water. If your pot of water boils before you get to soaking the noodles, it's fine. Just throw them right into the pot. Continuously stir so that the noodles don't get stuck to the bottom. Let the noodles boil for about 15-20 minutes and then taste test a strand to make sure that it's soft and ready. Now I'm draining out the water, making sure that the noodles don't fall out and adding in cold water to cool down the noodles. I always repeat this step a couple of times until I can safely stick my hand in the water. I forgot to film this step, but after draining out the hot water and replacing it with cold water, I use my index finger and the thumb to pick up a good amount of noodles and set them on the side in a bowl. I don't know if you guys can tell here, but I have them in bunches so that it's easier to grab when serving. Moving on, I have another big pot of boiling water here and this pot will be used for the broth. Next, I peeled my ginger and cut it into thin slices. Thin or thick, it doesn't really matter, it's up to your preferences. Now I'm cutting off the end of my already peeled garlic and throwing them into my chopper thingy. And this is going to give me nice minced garlic. I love using lemongrass in all of my soups. I am chopping it into small sections right here and bruising the stalks so that I can get all of the flavor out of it. Go ahead and throw them in the pot. Okay, so here I am rinsing the lovely pig feet. Make sure to rinse it twice if you decide to use it. After that, just pop them into the pot of water. If I was using a whole chicken, the process is the same thing. I just usually chop them into pieces. So now, I'm gonna start cutting up the extra veggies that I want to put in the soup. Straw mushrooms, I like to just cut them in half. For the baby corn, I like to do the same. So these bamboo, I don't usually use in my soup because they're the sour version. And I actually use a different brand, but since I have them, I'll just use them anyway. I'm slicing them into thin pieces so no one chokes. Garnishments. I always chop the cilantro, green onions, and cabbage last because they don't need to be cooked since they're going to be on top of the kabong anyway. And the lime, I like to cut it into quarters. I'm just gonna set these aside until I'm ready to use them towards the end. All right, so now I'm ready to make the curry sauce. I am adding three tablespoons of oil into a pan, letting it heat up a little bit, and then tossing in the ginger, garlic, 
and galanga that I chopped earlier. My heat is also on high and I want to cook them until they're brown. I am going to continuously stir so that the garlic does not burn because you don't want that. Add in the lime leaves. I love lime leaves because of the aroma it gives off. It smells really good. Once I see that the garlic is cooked and the ginger is almost transparent, I'll add in two pounds, maybe more, of the ground pork. I would do the same if I was using shredded chicken. Add in the salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. You can adjust it to your liking if you want. And mix until the meat is fully cooked. I didn't forget about the pork feet. It's been boiling for an hour now. I did have to add a little more water to the pot because it was getting low. Now that I have my pork all cooked, I will add the two cans of red curry paste, one can of the Thai noodle sauce, along with the shrimp paste and mix them into the cooked meat. Mix it well. Now I'm going to throw in the bamboo shoots, baby corn, and straw mushrooms into the broth to cook. I usually add these within the stir fry, but since there's obviously no more room, I'm just throwing them into the broth to cook for now. I couldn't pick up the pan, so I had my husband help me pour the red curry into the broth. This is where the magic happens. I'm adding three teaspoons of chicken broth powder into the broth with three teaspoons of salt. Feel free to add as much or as little as you want. Pouring in the four cans of coconut milk. Adding a half cup of fish sauce, a half cup of oyster sauce, and a half cup of mountain seasoning sauce. Adjust to your liking. It may seem a lot, but remember, I'm working with a big pot. Since the quail eggs and meatballs cook really fast, I add them at the end. Let the broth boil a bit and it is ready to be served. This recipe is a long process but very well worth the labor. Try it out and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So that is how you make kabong uh, and if you guys have any questions about the recipe leave me a comment below don't be shy I will answer all questions um, but anyways other than that give me a thumbs up if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so that you guys know when I upload all right and happy eating bye